Let me just start off this video by apologizing for the horrifically long gap between episodes. If this ever happens again, feel free to abuse me on Twitter and tell me to stop being lazy because that is what delayed this series. I hope I don't disappoint any of you today, but without further ado, welcome to episode 3. So, in the last two episodes I taught you the very basics of HTML and CSS, and if you've not seen them or simply can't remember what was in them, then the links are on screen and also in the description down below. I expect most of you to be experts though, as you have had a very, very long time to practice. One thing that was left out of those two videos though is a crucial part of both languages, and I was delighted to see some of you guys asking about it in the comments. Uh, what do I do if I have more than one of one type of element, but I want them styled in different ways? So for example, if I have two H1 tags, and I want one to be one colour and one to be another colour, how would I do that? At the moment, if we select the H1 tag in the CSS file and set the colour to blue, it changes both of them, and we don't want that. One of the ways of styling these elements separately would be to integrate the style into the HTML file, as we talked about in the beginning of episode 2. But a much better way to do this would be to give the h1 tag a unique identifier, and this is done with either an id tag or a class tag. Now, the difference between these two tags can be much more advanced, but the basic idea is that an id tag is unique to that page. There can only be one element with that id on that page of HTML, whereas the class tag can be used for multiple elements across a page. Both of these tags can also be used together at the same time without a problem. For the purpose of simplifying things, I usually flesh out my code using the class tags and only use the id tag when I really need to go and specifically pick an element that could be like nested among a lot of other code. If we give this h1 tag a class of blue, like this, by typing class equals and then in quotation marks, whatever we want to call that, uh, and we'll give this heading one the id of heading, and it's the same sort of format as class, just class switch with id. We can now go over into our CSS file and style them here. To select your class in CSS, use a full stop or period, followed by the name of your class. So for us it's full stop blue. And to select your ID in CSS, you use a hashtag. So for us it's hashtag heading, followed by the parentheses. Um, so now we can go ahead and make the title blue by setting this to blue. And we can also go ahead and make the heading whatever colour we want, so we're going to set it to red. Why not? Now, the great thing about the class tag is, now that we have a class that turns things blue, we can apply that to any other element and it will adopt the same CSS styling. So if we put in a paragraph element here, and we'll just put some lorem ipsum in there, which uh, I've already sort of stolen. Uh, and we want to set this to blue as well. We can just set the class to blue. And it, it turns it blue. It's brilliant. So, it's been pretty easy so far, but how about I kick it up a notch? What if, instead of selecting one element at a time, we want to select a bunch of elements together and style them together? Well, there is a div tag that is the core of any well-coded website. And the div tag is used to define like a division or a section or a group. I like to think of it as a container that we can use to sort of like wrap our code up into neat little sections. Now, the div tag can be altered just like the h1 tag or any other tag, and so can also be given identifiers like the id and class tag. So here we, you can see we've got like a, a huge bunch of code, and uh, I've already pre-prepared this, and it's ready to be styled. Now I have something in mind what I want to do with it. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of separate this off into little sections. So we're going to use these div tags. Now div tags, just like any other tag, we're going to we're going to put these around here. So you can see up here on the live preview, um, I've set up like a menu thing, and I want this to be going across the top, and I want it to be styled, and um, I also want this this and this to be like the heading and the subheading, and I want it to be sort of like inside a photo, or pro maybe maybe a colour, because that would keep it simple, and uh, then we've got subheading and the, the bit main bit of content on our website. So what we're going to do is we're going to se separate this off into little sections. So here we have this first div, and this first div we're going to call... Um, we're going to call it the navigation div because it's the, the navigation div. So we're going to get the class of nav. We also said that we wanted this to be the uh, sort of like heading and subheading thing. And there is actually a name for this. It's a jumbotron. So we're going to give this the div of uh, the class, sorry, of um, of jumbotron. A sort of like the name given to a piece of text uh, and a picture in in encoding sort of. It's, it's a bit of an unofficial official thing. Uh, you'll see why it's called Jumbotron a little bit later as well uh, when we start talking about Bootstrap, which is a really cool little thing that can really speed up your like web building process. And it's it's really cool. If you can't wait, um, just go look it up. It's so, so cool and so useful. So this is going to be our main content. 
So um, we're going to give this the, the class of main. So, whoops. Um, so <laughs> now we've separated off all of our little sections, what we want to do. And I'm just going to start doing some like minor basic CSS styling. Uh, we can do that at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, CSS and we're going to first of all just set up the body. I like to just right at the start when I first start out, um, you get a bit of an insight into what I do when I'm coding now. Um, I like to set the font family. So I really like sans serif, so I'm going to go with that. And I also always set the width to 100%. This basically removes all of the margins. You can see right now, and uh, next to, alongside and across the top, we've got a gap between the body and the top of the web page. I like to get rid of that because I actually don't take advantage of that margin. I set my own margins within different elements. And um, I recommend you do it too because it's actually really handy and you can get a lot more done if you don't have to worry about the sort of like default set, uh, the default margins, margins and stuff. So we need to set the padding to just zero pixels and we need to set the margin to zero pixels. And that's everything done. Now you can see it's like shifted it around a bit and uh, now we're, we're ready to start styling things. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make the navigation sort of like at the top and uh, I want to give it like a colour and things. And we can do that because we've um, we've given this, this navigation bar a class of nav, we can select all of these elements as one. So in here, if you remember, the dot nav to select it. And we want to set the position to relative. Um, a lot of this I've not covered in the, the, uh, the lessons because they're not sort of really common things, but you really need to learn them all if you want to like make the best websites you can. So you want to just go up and read up about um, all of these like different tags that you can use and different sort of modifiers that you can put on things. But what I'm doing right now is I'm setting the position so that it is relative to the page, which means if the page gets bigger or smaller, it will sort of adapt to that. And you'll see why I do that in a, set, in, in a bit. Um, and I've also set the top to minus nine pixels, which basically shifts it up a little bit. And uh, you can't, it's not really obvious at the moment. If we comment that out, you'll, you'll see it. Um, just doing that by pressing control and then forward slash. Um, but we also want to give it a bit of padding. Uh, I've already marked out what I want to do on this, so you're not seeing me sort of play around with it for ages and try and work out what it is. But what I'm doing right now is giving a 9 pixel padding from the uh, from, from the left, I believe. Or maybe it's the top, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> and I think it goes top, right, uh, bottom, left, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong, correct me if I am wrong. So um, we're doing that. You can actually add padding like we did in the last time by just selecting which padding exactly, but I know exactly what I'm going to put, so... I'm going to do that. And also we're going to set a background colour, so not background, a background colour. So we're going to give it a background colour of, uh, what, what do we like, Alice Blue looks good. Set it to that. And we're also going to give it a bottom margin of zero pixels because when we come up, to, when we come to like move the heading up, that will kind of mess us up a little bit. So we want to make sure that that's not there. Because by default, all of the elements in HTML have like a, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a margin. Now, as you can probably see, by doing this, what we've actually done is coloured the div with this colour rather than coloured in the elements. So rather than the element having like this list having a uh, a, a black, uh, not black, a um, Alice blue background, we've actually managed to get the entire div, the entire division, the entire group of them, and the full extent of that to be coloured in this colour. And that's really handy for making really nice aesthetically pleasing websites. Uh, there's a couple more things we need to do, um, and we need to be a bit more specific than just selecting the nav uh, thing. So because we've got all of these UL, LI, and then all the links that don't actually go anywhere, um, what you can do is uh, stack these. So like last time when uh, I was teaching you how to select things, we can just do this, and this selects all of the L the um, the unordered list, all of the list items, and all of the uh, links. It's not all of the links within the list items within the unordered list, it's just all of them. So what we want to do for these is set these to display in line. And what this will do is line them all up, hopefully, so they're like this. Now, it's starting to take a bit of shape, our menu bar is starting to take a little bit of shape. Um, but first of all, what we want to do is, uh, they're, they're very close together for my liking, so we're going to give it a bit, of, um, a bit of padding on the left hand side of all of the... whoops. On the left hand side of all of the uh, all of the links and things. So we're going to give it a 10 pixel padding. And we're also going to just turn off all of that underline and stuff because I don't like that. Um, so we can do that by doing text direction none. Uh, decoration, sorry. And um, we're also going to give it a colour. Let's give it a nice colour. Uh, let's 
what have we got? Dim grey. I like dim grey. Where is that? I don't know. Let's just... There we go. Dim grey. Um, so now we've got all of the pictures, and if I click off of this, you can see what they look like. All of the links, sorry, in the menu bar. Uh, there's a couple more things we need to do, though, to make this work. And as you can see, it, it doesn't look very nice at the moment. So, what we're going to do is we're going to have to select these two separately. And at the moment, we've got no easy way of doing this unless we give these a class. But we've used a class, uh, like, now. So now I'm going to use a, an ID. So we've actually got an example of using an ID. So I'm going to set the ID on this one to menu 1 and the ID on this one to menu 2 and that way I can select each of the menus and that means I can because I want this one to be on the left and this one to be on the right and now I can do that so what we're going to do uh, I'm just going to go above the nav because that will look nicer um, to me in my OCD mind and we're going to use the hashtag menu 1 to select the menu and we want it to float on the left so we can do that and we also want some padding, so we don't want it to be right against the wall, so we're going to add some padding on the left, fixed 50 pixels. And that just moves it over a little tiny bit, which makes it look a little bit nicer. And then we're going to do the same but the opposite for menu 2. So menu 2, and we want that to be uh, floating on the right, and this is where the magic starts happening, with a bit of padding on the right, I believe, for 50 pixels. That should, yeah, there we go. Um, I think that actually overrode. A, oh no! Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Cool. So now we've got a sort of like menu bar at the top. So it's time to work on the jumbotron part of all of this. And uh, what what I want to do to this is sort of like like I said, give it a background color. So first off, we're going to select the jumbotron. So it was dot jumbotron. I just love saying that word. It's it's a brilliant word. Um, and we're going to set the background color. So the background color we want to be. Uh, let's say cornflower blue. Where's cornflower blue? Cornflower blue. Cornflower blue. There we go. Looks good. Um, but it's not reaching all the way to the top, and it's not reaching all the way to the bottom. Um, so before I go any further, I'm just going to quickly set the position to relative. Um, I can spell. Oh, I know what I've done. Semicolon. Never forget them. There's a lot of times that I um, make little mistakes like that, and when you don't spot them, you can be sat there for hours being like, why, why isn't this working? And all you know, all you need to do is like add a semicolon or somewhere. So yeah, we're going to set the position to relative so that it's easy to manage later. And we're also going to do the same as we did before, and set the top to minus nine pixels because that just basically removes the, the margin at the top. But now we want to extend out the, um, the the div, and we do that with padding, not margins. So that's very important that you don't use margins for this. Uh, so we want some padding, and we want to set it to about this. I've not exactly noted down what this is going to be. This should work. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, so what we've done now is we've just sort of like padded it out. So the, the words aren't actually uh, what are being highlighted. It's the whole div. And that's what's so great about divs because you can create anything. You can create buttons. I had somebody ask last, uh, last episode about buttons, how you create a button. This would be how you do it. You'd have a link inside a div and then you can expand the div as, as big as you want. Um, you can give things border with CSS and uh, like round the edges and things and make them look really really good and drop shadows and things. Um, and also uh, there's a couple more things we need to do so we're gonna do the Jumbotron again and similar to how we did it before we're gonna select the H1 and I can't remember if this is a H... what is this? It's a H4 okay um, I think yeah H4 um, <laughs> so we're gonna select the H1 and the H4 tag and we want to set the um, the, the text align, we want it to be in the center, like that, so it starts to take shape. Uh, we'll give it a, a color, so let's give it a color of something, Alice Blue, that's that's what's at the top. I'll give it some uniformity, make it look more pleasing to the eye. Uh, but it's not very nice to look at against that background, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of a shadow. Um, sorry, not shadow, text shadow. Pretty much anything you want to do, you can do in CSS. So if you don't know how to do something, just Google it. I, I, like, no kidding, you will find it. Pretty much anything. So now we've got a bit of a shadow on that, it looks a lot nicer, a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Um, there's one more thing we need to do quickly, because um, I don't think that the, the home and the, uh, and the, like, the content is in the right place. So I'm just going to give the, uh, sort of the margins on this. Uh, Let's turn off the margin at the top. 
we'll give um, in from the edges like a nine pixel gap. No, that's too close. Um, Twenty five. That looks good. I don't want to spend too much time messing around with it. In if I was doing this for a client or doing this for somebody, I would definitely take more time. But I want to show you some magic now because we used the float right and float left um, here. What we've actually done to these menus is not fix them here. We've made we've made it so it's adaptive. So we've actually made an adaptive website right now. So if I full screen this, you'll see these go out to the very edges. And there's a really cool thing built into Google Chrome. Um, if you go to the developer options, which I can never remember where they are. Um, I'll find them in a minute. I swear. More tools into developer options or Control Shift I. Um, you can see here they've got some really good adaptive um, like adaptive design. Uh, up to design tools. So basically, this what this lets you do is go through and select the screen size of pretty much anything. So from phones to laptops to anything, and you can go through and see what your website would look like. So obviously, if I was building this for, if this was a mobile website, I'd need the fonts to be a lot bigger because that is a very, very small website. But if you're doing this on a laptop or a tablet, it, it would look pretty good. So um, uh, we we can know and we can we can be quite confident that our website will be quite viewable no matter what the screen size is, because we've now made these these elements float along the right-hand side. And I think that's really cool. Like, an adaptive web design is is the, the ultimate sort. Um, if you can get it so that they they work no matter what, it's fantastic. There is also a way to, um, to make websites so that, as you can see, as we get to a certain size, it's sort of like, it will stop because of where the margins and things are. Uh, there is a way to make it so that when it goes below this, it will turn into a different kind of website. So if the screen size is under a certain amount, it will go to like a mobile website automatically that's designed specifically for mobile. And um, several websites I've done in the past have this. And it, it, it can get quite complicated though, so that's something for definitely for another episode. And another thing that I'm going to be covering in another episode, because believe it or not, I'm not going to leave these for too long, I'm actually going to make them. Um, another thing for another episode, somebody asked me, how do you get your websites online? Now, I actually know a very, very easy, free way to get your websites online using a free domain and free hosting plan. It's pretty terrible, but for your first ever host, it's definitely, definitely a good starting point because you don't want to be paying like 40 quid on a uh, on a really expensive domain name and getting like a good hosting plan and all of this for your first website. You want to be playing about with it, breaking it probably, and uh, and just generally having some fun and learning uh, with a free domain because nobody wants to spend money on that sort of thing. So. I hope you're happy with uh, what we've done today. I really hope I've not disappointed any of you. Um, the live preview will break, by the way, if you do anything like this and click off the the, uh, the web page. So now if I do anything, uh, it won't really notice this. I had a, a load of people asking me why their live preview is not working. I really don't know. It, it depends on person to person, so I'm really sorry. Unless it's a general thing, I probably won't be able to help you. I'll try as much as possible there in the comments. But yeah, let me know how you got on with this. Let me know if you made the same website with me, if you made a different one. Send me it. I want to see it. Um, but thank you all very much for watching. I really hope I didn't disappoint, and I'm really, really sorry again for the massive, massive gap. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, and stick around for the next episode, because there will be another episode, I promise. Okay, that's all from me, guys. Thanks. I'll see you later. Bye.